everybody. We're back with another episode of D-Town TV. This is episode 95. It's the free show for DSLR shooters. I'm Larry Becker. My buddy here is RC, and we are going to start the show right away with a tip from RC. A little bit of music tip. Music trivia. Here's the question. You want to be able to use black IPs, and you want to be able to use Let's Get It Started on a portfolio that you're going to do on your website. This is one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about. And what happens is sometimes people just go, you know what, I'll just make a slideshow and uh, hope for the best. Yeah. They're like, uh, yeah, I know, it's copyright violations, copyright, but you know, if they ask me to take it down, I'll totally take it down. So what will happen is this. More often than not, I usually tell people, rather than get yourself in trouble, arm yourself with a little bit of skills. When you put your stuff up on YouTube, it may or may not be taken down. YouTube has actually gotten to a point where if you put a slideshow with music inside of it, they'll read the file, they'll read the audio that's in it, yep. and then if they find it, depending on the rights of whatever it is that people are doing, they'll put a little tag on the right-hand corner that says, this music is, and you can buy this music here. So they try to use it almost kind of as an ad. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that'll be blocked and it'll tell you, listen, music was taken off because of this, or you'll get like a removal notice or they'll take it down. On your website though, you expose yourself a little bit more because you don't have all of those mechanisms to be able to do that. You could get an angry letter from somebody sure. saying, this is our stuff, take it down. So a lot of the times people don't do it because they think that it's really expensive to be able to do. And it isn't cheap but it's actually something that you can do. So you're talking about known, noted known, artists. Known, noted, non-royalty free. Obviously, there's tons of different services for royalty free stuff, but if you wanna be able to use a known artist, these are the two places that you wanna be able to go. You don't have to contact artists or management companies. All you have to do is contact these organizations. There's two organizations, ASCAP and BMI. Okay. ASCAP is the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. BMI is broadcast music. These two organizations hold uh, the lion's share of the catalog of artists. Right. And on both of them, you can go to the websites. If you want to be able to take a look, you'll see that on the ASCAP, the ACE repertory. So that's where you can see which, you know, check your song. Check to see where, what artists, where it's registered. Is it registered okay. on BNI? Is it registered on ASCAP? Once you do that, you'll notice that in some of these sections, there's an area here under ASCAP called licensees. What you're looking for in this one section is you're looking for new media and internet. So under here, you'll see that there's a new media and internet section. Anytime that you have a new media and internet, and right here under BMI, license, and you'll see that you have new media. Examples, website. If you're using stuff for slideshows on a website mm -hmm. where you're not selling a product, now obviously this is not a substitute for lawyer service, make sure you consult your own lawyer if that's what you wanna be able to do. But you can get a general license to be able to play a slideshow of your images where you are not selling the music mm -hmm. on your website for something as little as like $288 a year. Cool. Not just one song, you can use multiple things. You, just, you apply for this new media license on either ASCAP or BMI, and then you can use that they're, music on they're covered, website. They're covered tunes. Yes. That's very cool. So, and, and it's one of those things where a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't know, you know, is it gonna do this, is it gonna do that? And I love royalty-free music. Like, I'm a big Smart Sound fan. SmartSound.com sure. has some great stuff. Getty Images, if you go to gettyimages.com forward slash music, I think it is, they've got some phenomenal stuff. But sometimes, you really wanna go with a published artist. The best way for you to be able to do that is just get a license from ASCAP, get a license from BMI, 288 bucks a piece. You know, the same photographers who gripe about, hey, somebody stole my image, are borrowing music. So, you know, it, it is another side of that copyright equation. And, it, and it's really an intelligent business investment to go ahead and spend under 300 bucks yeah. and cover a whole bunch of songs. Yeah, I talk to people all the time about it. I was just like, a lot of my images have genesis in music. I'm a, I'm a big, big, big music buff. So music is very important when you're working on this slideshow. Rarely do you ever see a slideshow with no music. So cover yourself. Invest a little bit of money into that, and you're going to get a great amount of coverage mm -hmm. and a great catalog. So Good tip, Thanks, Thank man. you very much. Yeah, and that'll protect an awful lot of the photographers out there. Nice. we got to run to a break. We will be right back with a tip from me. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> see you in a few. In an 
ideal world, every photograph we take would be perfect. The perfect lighting, the perfect exposure, the perfect flash, everything. Well, of course, in the real world, that doesn't happen. We take photos that have problems. Too much flash, not enough flash. Exposure problems, backlit problems. And that's really what this class is all about. In each lesson, I open a problem photograph, and you'll see me step by step, real time, as I attempt to fix that problem. So I hope you'll join me at Kelby Training for my class, Fixing Photographic Problems. Welcome back to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. Larry Becker here, I'm RC. Uh, you want to talk to us a little bit about user settings on a camera? Yeah, I do. Um, in fact, this camera that I that I shoot with every day, and this works on Nikons and Canons. This one's a D7000. Uh, there are an awful lot of Canons with user settings. And uh, just a couple quick things. First of all, there are user settings. So obviously there's stuff like program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, and things like that on your DSLR. But if you happen to have one of the newer cameras that has user settings, read in your manual how to go ahead and set these up. And I'll tell you a really cool thing that I I'm doing with this, and if you guys remember back to last season when RC did a, a very cool um, uh, demo with cookies, mm -hmm. and you showed multiple, uh, the, well, the, the concept is that RC does an awful lot of HDR work, and so what he was showing is some cameras are kind of limited in the total number of bracketed exposures that they can capture. This camera is limited. It, it captures three exposures and that's it for the bracket. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I go into a situation and I set up my camera just completely from scratch exactly the way that I want it set up. And then the next step that I do is go into um, uh, exposure compensation, and I dial it down two. And, and I want all my bracketing to be one exposure apart, so I dial it down two, and then I save that as user setting number one. And then I go to user setting number two, leave everything exactly the same, and I give that one a value of plus one on the exposure compensation. Then that way, when I'm ready to shoot, then I set up on my tripod, I have it in U1, user one position, and I just take a quick three pictures, bracketed pictures, then I set it on U2 and take the other three. And so what I'm doing is taking um, some minus pictures and I don't have any overlap at all. So I, I've done minus two, I set them up one bracket apart, uh, on my, one uh, f-stop apart uh, on my exposure compensation. So it's a cool, quick way to work. You set it up in advance and then that way it's just a matter of uh, a quick click. So I am no longer limited to just three exposures for my HDR. Now I've got six and they go right in a row. Very cool. So Very cool. User, user settings on your Canon and Nikon cameras. Nice. We got to take a break and when we come back, we've got a contest, great Sponsors, photographer. photographers, yeah. it's gonna be great. Stick around. We'll be right back. Have you ever seen a close-up photograph and thought, wow, I wonder how they made that? Wait till you see what we're going to photograph in my new close-up classes. We're going to photograph dropping strawberries into water and freezing them, taking pictures of rocks, the flowers, colored pencils, all kinds of great things, and we're going to make them look big like this. And in the class, we're going to photograph all this stuff here. Look at this. Please come join me at KelbyTraining.com. We're going to have a blast. Hi folks, Moose here with a real common question. Now people think of, you know, they see a rattlesnake, they see a picture of a grizzly bear, and the common question is, how do you deal with dangerous critters? Now the first thing you notice, okay, they're all attached, I don't have any wooden legs, it's nothing lost, nothing damaged in this process, I have no scars, nothing from any dangerous critters, never had any incident. In fact, with grizzly bears, I've never even had a bluff charge. How can that be? Because seriously, I have at one point had two cubs of grizzly bear literally underneath my tripod. One of them, because of the graphite nature, the little buzz was like chewing on it like a teething kid, with mom maybe 15 feet away. Lived through the instant. Okay? How do you do that? It's something that the, my book captured stresses from page one to page 396. That's knowing basic biology. Now, there's no way a man, uh, humans, can ever have total insight into what critters thinking or what they're going to do. Don't have that kind of arrogance. It's not going to happen. 
But with understanding basic biology, we kind of know some basics, warning signs that if we uh, see them and kind of act accordingly, everything goes fine. If not, things can get bad. I mean, the last couple of years, the number of photographers, not the public, but photographers who have been attacked and killed by grizzly bears has actually increased. Why is that? Well, I wasn't there, but let's just go for example, grizzly bears. That's probably the one thing people like to go photograph and think of the most dangerous. I personally had to think of them as teddy bears. Now, working with grizzly bears, when they don't want to be around with you, they leave, okay? It's a thousand pounds. They go wherever they want, and who's gonna stop them, seriously? But let's say the grizzly bear sticks around, because that's one of two things they're gonna do when they see you, stick around or leave. If they stick around, okay, and you're working the scene like you should. You're getting closer, you change your angle for the background, okay? When a grizzly bear gets upset, the first thing you do, it looks like a big yawn. Their mouth opens really wide. It looks like a huge yawn. There's no noise comes out, but that's the first indication they're not happy with the scenario. If you see a grizzly bear do that, you move, and you move the opposite direction. Slowly, calmly, just move away. Now, if you miss that sign or choose to ignore it, the next thing they're gonna do is you're gonna see foaming at the mouth and they'll hear a big pop, okay? At that point, if you're not gone, you probably will be ran over shortly because grizzly bears, they just like to run over things. If you're a thousand pounds, why not? It's, you know, not many things recover from it. Those basic signs, if you understand and see them, will keep you safe and there is no dangerous critter you should worry about with that simple knowledge. So get a copy of Captured, grab a bunch of that knowledge and go out and make some great images. Welcome back to Heat on TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. RC, Larry. Yep. You've got a website we gotta watch. Yeah, in fact, um, I have a, a guy that I found out about through National Association of Photoshop Professionals. He's a NAP member, and I saw his NAP member portfolio, and then I jumped over to his website, and this is it. His name is Gregory Gerhardt, and it's gregorygerhardt.com. And the guy has, he, he does a lot of compositing, and he's just got this real great command of light. He's obviously a very good photographer, but he's also quite good at post-processing. And um, he's based out of St. Louis, and I'm guessing that's how come he does some of these beer ads that he does, uh, St. Louis being, well, I guess it's different different brands of beer, so maybe that's not why he's there. But in any case, the... Uh, maybe the, he just the, likes beer. Maybe he just likes beer. Yeah, he takes an awful lot of photos of it, but really cool stuff. And he's got a, a nice personal portfolio, but he's got this great command of light. Uh, he, he just is quite good at about that and composing and post-processing light and light beams and things like that into his work. So check him out. It is uh, inspirational photography for lots of shooters. Nice. Very, very cool. Thank you very much. Now, contest time. What you're going to do is you're going to go to kelbytv.com forward slash dtown tv. you got to go into the Kelby TV website. So if you're watching us on like Google Plus, if you're watching us on different websites on YouTube, you have to go back to kelbytv.com forward slash dtown tv to be able to leave us a comment. This show is about you guys. Tell us what you want to see. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Any one of those things is going to win a copy of this book. Get your photography on the web. This is the first book that I wrote, and it's one of those books that's really, really near and dear to my heart because I think that when you're a photographer and you're building a website, a lot of the times people think that it's actually very hard to be able to do it. You know, you do make it very easy. And, and I'm not just saying it because he's here. <laughs> this, is, so. this is like the de facto book. As soon as this rolled out, everybody started going to this book and going, you mean I don't have to pay thousands and thousands and thousands to get my images to look good on my website? And, and you talk about different types of things so that people can see the images on iPads, because mm -hmm. that's a big market. People are browsing the web a lot on iPads. So you talk about that, you talk about, and, and it's not a book to teach you how to be a programmer. Yeah, it, this, isn't, this isn't built for programmers. This is built for everybody else. Right. I'm a big fan of using like the WordPress platform to be mm -hmm. able to create a blog, to be able to create a site, and there's tons of reasons why I think that you should do it that way. And that's the kind of stuff that I talk about in this book. I get you, it's start to finish. You should be able to grab this book and just go, okay, page one, what do you want me to do? Click. Page two, what do you want me to do? Click. And it's a thin it's book. It's recipe style. It's recipe style. Yeah. I want you to be able to get through this book in a couple of hours and just go, you know what? My website's done. And if you feel like, was that it? Yeah, that's it. There's really not that much to it. Hopefully one of you guys will get to win it and then you guys get to put up your own website. Yeah. But uh, I think that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much guys for stopping by. 
Larry, thank you very, very much. RC, it's a pleasure every single time. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.